Hello everyone, I'm Olivia from DIA and today we're looking at some key considerations when planning for your standards check. Um, this is a very important part of every ADI's career and we want to make sure that we get it right with some good planning and preparation. So um, there are some lots and lots of things to consider when taking your standards check of course but we're going to be looking at some of those today and um, exploring those a little, a little bit further. So um, if you want to ask your questions as we go along, you're absolutely more than welcome. And what we're going to do is respond to those afterwards in the with the text box. So um, do ask them as we go through. And as I say, we'll go through them at the end and respond to you. So as I say, lots of things to consider. There's lots of um, lots of planning, lots of things. But let's look at these three areas today. So first of all, we've got the area. Let's start with that one. So once you know the area, then we can think of you know the options available. Most of us will, or in fact nearly all of us, will know the area because it's where our local test centre is. Um, it's on the invite for your standards check, and you're going to know about that you know a few weeks in advance. So you've got that little bit of time to go out and do a recce of the area if you're not sure. Um, you have tools like Google Maps, Google Street View, brilliant things that you can use, but nothing actually beats physically being there and looking around the area if you're unsure about anything at all. So the area and the lesson and all of that will depend on the type of roads there are there. So for example, if you're thinking of planning a lesson on dual carriageways, because that's what your people need that day, um, then okay, that's great. You're considering that your people need that lesson, um, and so you're putting their needs and requirements first. That's, that's brilliant and that's important. However, if the nearest dual carriageway to your starting place, which is your test centre, is say a 20 minute drive away, or you know, a bit or further, um, then you've got to consider how much actual time are we going to be spending in the hour of your standards check actually working on that bad area of the dual carriageways. And when it comes to dual carriageways, they're often, you know, they can be longer stretches of road. If there was a if there was a hold up, you're going to be stuck on it, maybe a bit harder to get off or divert your route. So it's a bit of a risky move. Um, not to say not to cover dual carriageways, certainly not what we're saying, because yes, they're a great thing to cover if your people need it. But um, it is a case of making sure that you are um, considering the local area, considering the local the types of road where around the area, around the test centre, and you know, thinking about who you've got with you. If you've got somebody who's more advanced or maybe a full license holder, experienced full license holder, then you've got a bit more leeway to, and a bit more flexibility to travel a bit further afield. Um, and because you're not gonna be you know, helping them through junctions and things like that. But if you've got somebody who is a bit more novice, um, who needs a bit more guidance from you, then of course you're gonna need to maybe, you know, not travel quite as far afield and, and work on, you know, an area which is meaningful to the people and what they need at the time. So it's just a real case of making sure that looking at the roads, what's available to me and, you know, not, not going for thinking, okay, well, I know I've got to cover that. Uh, I know my pupil needs to do a bit more work on like rural roads, but, you know, so I'm, go I'm going to go for that because that's what I think the examiner wants to see. Yes, do that if you've got the time and there and you've and you're in the right location but if it's not you know particularly near I would say not within so maybe a you know I wouldn't go more than about 10 minutes out or something like that because you've got to consider you know maybe 10 minutes or so at maximum at start five ten minutes you want to be talking to your pupil then you're going to get going then you've got to get to the area and you're already maybe up to maybe 20 minutes into that hour. You've got to then get stuck into the lesson, deal with that, get some learning outcomes, you know, get some goals uh, met or at least moved closer towards. And you've then got to get back and you've got to then have a little bit of a wind down at the end of the session. So, you know, you've got to think, how am I going to spend that hour? And that's not factoring any hold ups or anything like that you might have as well. 
So um, real, really important one. So um, considering, yes, traffic certain times of the day. If you are, um, if your standard check happens to be within, uh, you know, rush hour, really busy times of the day, then that can, you might think, oh, blimey. But that actually can work to your advantage because you can base your lesson subject on that. Um, but, and we'll talk about that in a moment, but um, you need to think about, um, if you have certain busy times of the day, then um, yeah, there will be obviously certain restrictions on certain roads and you know, you, you don't wanna be spending all your time sat in a queue of traffic. Of course, if you've planned this and you've, you've checked the area out and you've, you've done everything that you reasonably can to avoid sat there in traffic where you can't turn off, then you know, sometimes Sometimes it might, it, it has happened and it will happen again. Um, and what you need to do is obviously make the best of that situation. If you're sat in traffic um, and your people, you know, you notice they're a bit close to the car in front or the car behind is getting a bit too close to you, you know, you could even just work on that and, and you know, agree with them that while we're just sat here, we're going to kind of look at some other things that is re are relevant to, to, you know, being a, being a safe driver. So there are other other ways you can kind of divert that. So um, picking up on other small clues and things. So um, any roadworks? Um, I remember on my last standard check in particular that I did a, you know, had an idea where I was going to go. I didn't plan the route down to every single last junction because I think that you need a certain amount of flexibility in your plan. You just got to kind of know approximately, you know, maybe 90% of where you're going to go, but um, there needs to be some leeway, some level of flexibility within your plan in case you need to you know, something happens, you're dealing with a pupil, you're dealing with a live situation. So you might need to pull over, you might need to cut a piece off your route or divert back sooner because you've had to pull over and have a discussion about something. So, you know, anything can happen. Um, but I remember then I um, I did all that, checked everything out, everything was fine. And then I my standard check, I think it was early afternoon. So I was just sort of late morning. I thought, okay, I'll just go and have a quick check round because it was near a town centre. <clears throat> so as I was going around that town centre, <coughs> excuse me, sorry, in the morning, um, I noticed that there was tons of roadworks everywhere that happened. Um, and so, you know, it's looking for signs, looking for signs on, you know, lampposts, looking for roadworks starting on this date, you know, basic things like that. I know they're kind of an ADI is very good at spotting these things because we need to make sure our lessons flow in general anyway. Um, and we need to get between lesson um, between our lessons during the day and we need to make sure that we can you know keep our keep our appointments on time but um, it's also really important that um, you know maybe if you've got the time just to do that one last final recce of the area just to make sure because had I not done that I probably would have been a bit you know thinking okay plan b I'm now stuck in traffic <laughs> what am I what am I going to do I need to keep this lesson going I need to keep the pupil interested I need to keep things relevant to that pupil at the time so I need to start now looking for other things and you know um, and and doing that so as well as the area um you need to think about places that you might need to pull over. Um, <clears throat> obviously, if you've got the luxury and you know your area inside out, you'll know where you can stop legally and safely and where you can't. Um, if you, you know, there's some parts of your route where you're not entirely sure, then do have a, do have a look at where, you know, you could do that. Or if you feel, feel your people might need a little, you know, five minute breather um, and halfway through or something like that, then, you know, always good to have that as a backup. Um, you never know when you need it. So always have, build that in. Um, thinking about if you did, you know, if you did a motorway or dual carriageway or something like that, then think about in terms of changing the plan um, if you need to to pull over to discuss something. So um, if the driver, like we were just saying, needed to take a little breather um, or, you know, we wanted to have a quick discussion to reflect on something or, you know, a particular learning point in that session, um, what we need to do is make sure that um, if you are, um, you know, having somewhere to pull over is, is the one thing. Um, but, um, you know, thinking 
if I do go on this particular road, like we were saying at the beginning, um, I, you don't want to sort of end up getting stuck on somewhere where you can't turn off and your options of, you know, limited to none um, to divert your route. So, you know, just, just consider things like that as well. So lesson subject or goal, whatever however, you know, terminology you prefer to use. So once we think about the area, because that's, that's kind of a given, that's where the test centre is and we need to work with that area and around that, that area, then we need to think, okay, um, like we were just saying, what type of area is it? Are there a lot of roundabouts? Are there country roads? Are there um, faster roads if we needed to get back out onto those sorts of areas? Um, is it just purely town? Are there home zones, 20 mile an hour limits, are there speed restrictions, are there, you know, width restrictions, you know, what type of area are you dealing with? Um, and thinking about, okay, so what type of, you know, that that's sort of the framework, you know, what, what lessons can I then do in those areas? So again, always ask, uh, put first what the learner needs and not what you want to do. This can be a common pitfall when it comes to deciding on the lesson subject. Um, we do need to make sure that it is a, you know, it's a collaborative um, between the ADI and the pupil. We need to make sure that it's an agreement between you both, that this is this subject that we plan to work on is going to be of benefit to the pupil at that time, because that's where they are in their learning. Um, and that's what, what will help them next. So, um, Sometimes it's happened and, you know, it, it, it might well happen again where an ADI possibly due to nerves or an, an, being anxious or um, dare I say maybe just being unprepared, um, then that can cause them to keep to an, an, a subject where they are happier with. So it, it, it's they're staying within their comfort zone in order to cope with the stress of doing the standard check. And what they'll end up doing is scoring a lower mark because they won't be, you know, that lesson plan won't be suitable necessarily for that pupil. Um, they might be thinking, okay, I'm gonna go and do roundabouts today, but the pupil can do the roundabout standing on the head. And so you're trying to make something out of that situation, which, you know, isn't there so you you need to think about just bearing in mind pupils needs come first and I know a lot of ADIs know this it's just always good just to reiterate a few of the basics from time to time when it comes to that lesson subject think wider than a typical PST we've still got PST hangover I think we should coin that as a phrase um, typical PST lesson like we used to have years ago um, on check tests and uh, the old part three where you know we had to think okay we need to do with junctions or approaching and you know phase one phase two and I know that some of the real experienced ADIs I've really you know they've they've moved on and they know what they're doing and they've think okay I know I don't have to stick to those subjects and fit within one of those pigeonholes if you like but there are still some ADIs that maybe for one reason or another are still you know got that train of thought they're not they haven't actually thinking I can go and do pretty much whatever my pupil needs at this time as long as the area is suitable and things like that so think wider so um, you can do um, a lesson on distractions now that wasn't on uh, mentioned anywhere on any PST form or any check test form and things like that however it is a major, major part of driving, as we know, and it accounts for so many crashes on our roads every single day. So we need to make sure that um, if we're going to cover something like that, yes, we can. Um, if it's relevant, it's, it's suitable, it's applicable, um, and it's a nice, flexible lesson too. So you can deal with distractions from you know, um, uh, from a novice driver point of view, you can deal with them from a full license holder experience driver point of view and anything in between. So you can adapt that broad subject um, to that person. And it is a broad subject because, um, and it might be, if you go in there with just the subject of distractions, you might find it's actually too broad and you haven't actually got very clear defined outcomes or goals for that session bearing in mind you've got an hour session so you've got to think well 
And if you can, you know, think of how many distractions there could be, you know, you can, I can think of, you know, 10 just now in, in a few seconds. So you can, you can't cover all of that. So what you need to do is boil it down to something which is perhaps more relevant, something you've noticed your people doing or not doing recently. Um, and you need to think about, um, that point of view and that angle and, and narrow that goal down to be more specific. We've heard of SMART goals and they are so important. You've got specific, is it specific enough? Is the goal, <clears throat> is it narrowed down enough? Is it, um, sorry, I've got a creaky chair, everyone, sorry about that. Um, is it specific enough? Is it measurable? So how will I measure the success? Will I know that, you know, success and, uh, or, you know, how's that happened? Has it happened? Um, is it achievable? Is it achievable within the time that we've got? Is it achievable for this particular person? Is it relevant and realistic uh, for, for the driver and for where they are in their learning um, and for the area? Is it, and also the last one is time, is or is time bound, time restricted? So you've got, you, you're working with about an hour. So you've got to make sure that whatever you fit in there can fit into those boxes. So. If you want to go for distractions, brilliant. If it was um, where you've got a, um, let's say, a subject where you know that the pupil, um, they've, you know, they've mentioned about maybe, I don't know, um, having a child in the car, um, then you might think, okay, that's, that is quite a big distraction or can be on its own to have a child in the back of the car. A child might be upset, might be screaming its head off and, you know, that, that will rattle everyone's brain. But when you're trying to drive and concentrate on that and trying to keep your child happy as well, then that will obviously detract from all of your concentration being on driving. It, it, we're all human and we've only got so much concentration. So you are going to naturally be think, trying to divide and keep the car on the road but deal with, with, with your child in the back of the car as well. So if you've got pupils in that situation, um, because we have um, questions coming in to us to say, you know, can I take um, my pupil wants to bring their car uh, their child um, on the lesson? Yeah, they can. There's a few things and, you know, a few considerations. And if you're worried about that, then um, give us a call. We can have a chat with you about that. Um, in the main, yes, you can. But yeah, have, have a chat with us first. Um, and, and to think about, make sure you're considering everything. But um, so it might be a child distraction. Obviously, you're not going to bring your child or a child on a standard check, but it could be um, you can deal with it in theory. So, you know, you know that when your child starts screaming, then um, or, you know, they've dropped, they've dropped their favourite toy or something like that, then what coping strategies are you going to be able to work out, you know, with them? So let's say for now, we've got the child screaming in the back of the car, we're driving along, we're in this situation now. What are your options now? What could you do? So, you know, it could even be something as as as, as that. I've literally thought that off the top of my head, so <laughs> you don't all go, go in for that lesson plan necessarily. But um, distractions, it can be, you know, mobile phones, it can be... Um, something on your mind everyone's got stuff on their mind um exam pressure work stress um uh, you know anything so it can be you know just as an example and that lends itself nicely as i say because it's a flexible lesson it can work across a broad range of pupils that you might take with you on a standard check and but the downside is you need to make sure it's a smart goal and the smart objective so make sure you narrow it down to an aspect of distractions that's you know top tip so, um, the person, right, so we need one of those as well when we're doing our standard check. So once you've narrowed down your options in terms of the area and your lesson you're covering, then we need to think, right, okay, who are we going to take? This is all often, you know, probably one of the biggest head scratches that ADIs can face. And we need someone reliable, ideally someone that we have some great rapport with. So we want someone that we get a bit to and fro with as we talk, you know, so someone who... Um, who can understand and, and, you know, listen to us and, and, you know, respond to us. We know that some, some pupils that they, you know, they, they put all their concentration, especially for when they're more, more new to driving into the task of driving. And sometimes they might not be so responsive when you drive with them and you talk to them. So that's fine. And we, we work around that, but, um, if we can, if, and if you take that person with you, that's fine on the standard check. You just have to, you know, agree with them, um, in front of the examiner. 
just so the examiner is aware, of, you know, they don't know you, they don't know your pupil, they don't know how your pupil um, is going to respond. So, and you, you know that better so and you've got the information so you know share that at the beginning just before we set off to you know say okay you know we're going to work in the usual way in terms of are you happy with um me asking you questions um you know some smaller questions maybe um when you're less busy um but if we need to discuss anything you know you're happy for us to continue as we normally do and, and maybe pull over and have a have a quick chat about it would that be okay and yeah so you know you're just covering it off you're just making sure those ground rules that basic agreement of how you adi and pupil are going to work together in that session and the examiner sat in the back you put yourself in the examiner's position as well you kind of want to know because if you if that if you didn't hear that and you're the examiner sat in the back of the, the car and you're looking at the back of the adi and the pupil's heads thinking okay well do i know what you know the, do i know this what you know how, how are they how's this going to work so if, it, if you hear that then you're thinking okay this adi knows they're aware of this they've covered it off and the pupil you know they've, they've got agreement from the pupil that this is how it's going to work so that's good that's a good thing do your best to have a backup option if you can yeah okay um finding the right person is is some or finding a person sometimes is can or can be a challenge um having a backup option can push our luck sometimes but um it's not beyond the realms of possibility um a backup option you know can be anyone i mean who can you take you to a standard check pretty much anyone that holds a valid license for that car so you know obviously um making sure that you know if you're if you've got a manual tuition car and you're going to do your standard check in that but they've got a full automatic license then you know you bear, bear those sorts of things in mind but um you need to think about uh, that was you know just a silly example but you know just just bear those sorts of things in mind um if you have got um someone else or you think oh, i don't know who i can take yes you can take friends and family um you can do that um if chances are friends and family may well be full license holders, maybe experienced full license holders. So you need to um, give consideration to, if your bread and butter every day is teaching learners from a provisional point, drop, provisional, uh, provisional license point of view, getting tongue tied, then you need to give, give some consideration to, if you are not used to dealing with full license holders and experienced full license holders, then they are a different animal. They are a different, you know, being so you do we do need to you do need to consider that um, you will need a different approach with us so again if you find yourself in that situation give us a call we'll have a chat with you um and but don't again fall into that pitfall thinking i'll take a full license holder because you know i'm perceiving that really that's going to be a might be a slightly easier option um no you 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 still have to demonstrate certain training approaches um and you know align them to how this person best learns um so you know you have to bear that in mind all the time yeah you can take pretty much anyone as long as they've got a valid license um yeah they can't be an adi or somebody who's taking their part three so that is a lot of what I wanted to cover for today. Just a few things to get you thinking, just a few considerations to bear in mind. And it would be great to hear any of your questions that you've got in the moment, and we'll go through and answer those. Um, so um, yeah, let us know. If it's a question, if you don't have a question at the moment, that's okay as well. If you're a member of us, then you know, you've know got access to our help desk. You can give us a call um, and we will have a chat with you. We can email you back, whatever it, whatever you want. Um, if you're not currently a member and you're listening, why not? Come and join us. Come and see what we're all about. Um, have a look at our website, driving.org, and we'll be happy to discuss any aspect of our membership with you. And I'm sure we've got something for you as well. So, um, Lovely to have everyone listening today and uh, thank you for your time and we're going to be um, answering your questions soon. So thank you very much. Hello everyone. Um, hope you enjoyed that. Just wondering if anyone's got any questions. Um, if you do type them into the chat box um, and then I'll, I can answer them.
Hi, Pauline. Um, yes, your less your question um, would a lesson on spiral roundabouts be acceptable? Yes, it can be because they can be very complex junctions to to do. So, um, obviously, I don't need to tell you um, as long as they've had very good experience at roundabouts large roundabouts, fairly complex roundabouts so far, and they've had adequate preparation. Um, you know, you can use the street view, uh, not street, well, yeah, you could use street view. You could use um, satellite view so they can see um, what the lanes are, where the lanes work. You know, you'd prep them properly for that. Um, if you're going to do that, the only other thing I'd say is you don't get you get roundabout after roundabout sometimes, but you don't often get spiral roundabout after spiral roundabout because they're quite specific. So I would say um, that if you did that, you would need to work out your route. So if spiral roundabouts is your learning, you know, that's your goal. Um, and there's, you'd have to think, okay, what, maybe what aspect of spiral roundabouts would your goal remember i mentioned about smart objectives so with these smart objectives think what aspect of spiral roundabouts do i want my pupil to cover what or what does my pupil need to cover and then obviously develop your lesson plan on that um, you would need to come back and approach that roundabout a few times from various different ways maybe some straights some lefts some you know various exits um, and then see see where they get from there um, information, um, next question um, on what the examiner is looking for or scoring. Well, there's the S SC1, standard check um, SC1 marking form. Um, that can be typed into Google. Um, if you just type in DVSA SC1 uh, marking form, that, that will come up, a green form. Um, all the information on that is also on gov.uk, so you can look on there as well. Um, plus other information. I hope that helps. Um, we do have more information on scoring um, as well. So if you, again, if you go onto the, <coughs> excuse me, sorry, if you go onto the gov.uk website, um, have a little look at standards check um, and you, there's lots of information on there. So effectively, the scoring is between uh, up to 51 points. Um, 0 to 30 points would be a fail, and the, that would be you know unsatisfactory performance. A grade B is anywhere from 31 to 42 in points inclusive. So that means you know you'll stay on the register. That's okay. Grade B. Uh, grade A is anywhere from 43 to 51 points, so you've shown a high standard of instruction, and again, you'll stay on the register. So hope that explains it a little bit more for you. Um, Peter's asked, my standards check a couple of weeks away. Pupil lined up, one back up, considering asking to another back up if needed. I like your work, Peter. Very good. Um, if, if you're in that position to um, get that many you know, a backup for your backup, then brilliant if you can. Um, understand though that because of certain times for the standards check or day of the week, um, you've, you know, sometimes it can be very difficult to get a pupil um, for that. Um, so we understand that, yeah, it, it can be tricky sometimes, but, uh, you know, have have those backups there. It's, it's great. So, if you want to chat, you know where we are. Um, any other questions from anyone at the moment? Just so you know, guys and girls, um, I'll be around for the next five minutes or so. So if you have any further questions, do ask them now. Obviously, if you are a DIA member, you can give us a call. Um, the phone number I've put in the chat box, but that's 0208 686 8010. Um, you can email support at driving.org as well. If you're, as I say, that that's one of the membership ben one of the many membership benefits. If you're not a DI member, why not? <laughs> Give me a call, um, and uh, you know we can we can we can sort that out for you. Um, we've got some good offers on at the moment. So if you are looking to um, thinking of joining, you're on the cusp, or you need some persuasion, happy to do that. So have a give us a call. 0208 686 8010. So Pauline's asked, we'll fear the risk management section. Um, yeah, um, risk management can be one of those areas. 
what we always kind of say to try and normalize, rationalize, whatever the word is for this, is the, f the fact that every one of us, before the standards check came out in 2014, um, before there was a little section on the marking form that says risk management, um, and we know that that can be a uh, you know that on its own can be a make or break for us in terms of the result. Um, we've all been managing risk because none of us would be here. Um, so if we just keep it really, if you think about it, that in those really simplistic terms, we've all been managing risk. Um, again, if you look at further information, you get the SC1 marking form. So you've got the areas of risk management, the lower competencies on there. Um, you can cross-link that um, to the um, DVSA ADI1 document. Again, you can find that on Google. You can then, that what that document then does, it breaks down what typically the DVSA would be looking for in terms of showing competence for that area and and equally, no, no, not competence. We do have a book called the, the um, DIA Essential Guide to the National Standards and Standards Check. So again, um, lots of people have books, um, sorry, lots of people worry about the standards check and they worry about the risk management, but also make sure that you are really up to date with the national standards for driver and rider trainers as, as a start. There are other sets of national standards as well for driving a category B vehicle, other, other vehicle categories, um, learning to drive. There's loads of different ones, but you know, if you haven't you know, open that door and gone into the national standards as yet, then please do so as soon as possible. Or if you have kind of browsed it when it when the standard check changed a few years ago and you think nah. it has changed, it has updated somewhat. So please do go on there. Um, again, go to Google, type in DVSA, national standards for driver and rider training, and you will see it on there. And it's a document you can download. If you are going to print, it's about 33, four pages long. So it's quite a bulky document to print. So just thinking of carbon footprint. Um, also, if you did print it, do put a date on it because it does change, it does update. So always make sure you're working with the, the up-to-date version. So hence why if you just look at it on, um, on gov.uk, you're always going to be seeing the right version. So have a little look on there as well. In that national standards, there is a section um, in 6.4 um, all about risk management as well. And the DVSA, when we go for a standards check, are looking for evidence that we're working towards those national standards. So do go on there and don't, don't brush those aside thinking, oh, well, you know, there was rattling on about that. They, it's for good reason that we rattle on about it. So happy to do another web chat on national standards at some point um, as well. Um, Someone else uh, is, is taking a brand new learner, not realistic for standards check, may have to drive them to some suitable location, start and end. Yeah, um, you can take a new learner. What we would advise you to um, avoid is doing a controls lesson because you're not going to be hitting all of those lower competencies on that marking form by sat at the side of the road doing controls. So really avoid doing that. Um, if it's you know, a uh, few lessons in, uh, two, three lessons in, and you're going to be doing junctions, basic left turns, right turns, things like that, and drumming in the, the routines and the sequences that we need to follow. That That is fine. Um, if your uh, test centre is um, in a busy area and you've got um, a, a suitable training area for that level of um, pupil, a few minutes away, then you can drive them to that area. When you meet your examiner at the beginning, do tell them what your plan is and what, what that's what you're going to be doing and you've agreed it with the pupil. And make use of that few minutes drive from the test centre to the training area in terms of MSM routine get and demonstrating what you're doing and why you're doing it and what you're seeing and 
all of that. So re making real good use of that time and make it quite interactive. Do it on the way back as well. Um, if there's been any particular areas that they need to work on or, or something like that that's flagged up during that lesson, during that standard check, then you could then demonstrate that on the way back. Um, you could even, if they're picking up quite well, you could even get them to tell you and give you some direction from the passenger seat on the way back. And so they can see if you did this at this point, that could happen. Obviously, you don't want to go too far with it, but you can you can pick them up and, and, and take them somewhere and, and do the same back. Um, can we record audio and video of a standard check? Um, well, the, the DVSA's rules on cameras, as I'm sure you're aware, is cameras, dash cams can face outside the vehicle. So they can face forward at the front, and then they can face outwards at the back. Um, but unfortunately, the, the same rules apply for a standard check. So no audio, um, no inward facing camera, but outward facing is okay. Um, so um, someone is saying they might consider taking their, their wife, full license holder, several bad habits. Mention, I mentioned at the beginning of the test, my concern is she would drive perfectly. Okay, um, that's, I mean, you can take um, your wife, that's fine. Um, several bad habits. Um, my last standard check, I took my husband along. Um, he's a pretty good driver anyway, um, but there's a few bits. No one's a perfect driver, are they? So there, there were there were a few few areas, and so well, I worked on them and and, um, and and to his to his level and his ability. Um, what I would say is, if you are not used to taking a full license holder. And I'm going to mean this with the greatest of respect to everybody because some ADIs, they're bread and butter and they really specialise in teaching provisional licence holders and that's where they excel. Um, and some people will, um, and then they're not so used to dealing with a, a full licence holder. Um, you do need a different approach with a full licence holder. That could be a subject for another day. So what I would say to that is, yes, you can take your wife. You don't have to hide that she's your wife. You can say, I brought my wife along with me today. That's fine. Um, and you can say, you know, do, do the lesson that, that you need to do. Um, but make sure you're not too telltale. And if you're not used to dealing with all license holders, then... Um, I would say give us a call and we can have a chat about that in more depth on the help desk if you if you wanted to. Okay, just having a little look on some of these um, other questions. Peter, from past experience, I lost marks by not dealing properly with a safety critical incident. Yeah, you can do. Um, depending on the circumstance, depending on the context and what happens, yeah, you 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 will do if you you will lose marks if if you don't don't deal with it. Um, so yeah, um, obviously if you wanted to discuss that a bit further and have provide a bit more information, then you know where I am. Happy to chat with you. I've spoken with you before, so that that'd be great. Um, can we do awareness and planning um, on from Crawley? Um, hi, Jack. How are you doing? I haven't see, haven't seen you for a while. Um, Yes, um, I tell you what, drop me an email, training at driving.org is the email for, for you guys if you wanted to get in touch with any of this stuff or the phone numbers I've gave out earlier. Um, yes, I'm happy to do happy to do anything if, if, if you guys want it, just, just say. Um, Pauline, thank you um, as well. So uh, one on risk management. Yeah, that's fine. I have done them in, in the past on risk management. Um, but yes, we can certainly look into that, no problem. Okay, so that seems to be all your questions at the moment. Hopefully, I've answered them okay for you. Um, as I say, some of them, if I, you know, require maybe a bit more information just to pad out the, the certain context that you're talking about. And um, so you've got the email, you've got the phone number, happy for you to get in touch with us and we, will, we can have a more of an in-depth conversation with you. Okay, so I'm going to be signing off in, a, in another few seconds now. So I'd like just to say thank you to everybody for attending. Um, and we will be doing some more webinars. And so you'll see some more information coming out about the next subject soon. In the meantime, happy Friday, everyone. The sun's out. Make sure you've got your sun cream on for tomorrow. No driver's tans. <laughs> and um, and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll catch you soon. Take care. Bye.